A lesion is tissue damage from disease or injury. Therefore, a brain lesion is damage to the brain from injury or disease. Depending on the size and area damaged, brain lesions can range from being mostly harmless to life-threatening and can lead to many different changes such as memory difficulties, personality changes and difficulties concentrating. The location. The area in the brain that this presentation will focus on is the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped mass of around 12 nuclei located in the mid-temporal lobe. Its size ranges from 1 to 4 centimeters, with the average being 1.8 centimeters. As with most other brain structures, you can actually have two amygdala located on either side of the brain's hemisphere. Both amygdala are located far within the frontal portion of the temporal lobes, medial to the hypothalamus and adjacent to the hippocampus on either side of the brain. The function. The amygdala is one structure in the limbic system with its main functions being feeling emotions such as fear, anger, anxiety, and pleasure. Ability to interpret facial, uh, emotional facial expressions. The thalamus and hypothalamus are responsible for changes in emotions and for relaying sensory information. The cingulate gyrus coordinates smells and sights with pleasant memories and also controls the body's emotional response to pain. The basal ganglia is a group of 12 nuclei in the white matter of the frontal lobes. Its purpose Purposes include controlling motor behavior and habit learning. The amygdala plays a role in many important brain functions as it is a part of the limbic system of the brain. The fun functions listed are all the functions of the various parts of the limbic system. The limbic system includes all brain structures located under the cortex but above the brain stem. One of the main functions of the amygdala is it decides where and what memories are stored based on the importance of the emotional response. The amygdala sends sensory information to the thalamus, which acts as an information port for sensory information. The thalamus also receives sensory information from the cerebral cortex about movement and sensory perception. The amygdala sends much of its sensory information to the thalamus, which connects to the cerebrum and spinal cord, and this is how it relays its sensory information. For example, one theory as to why you can feel shivers down your spine when you're scared is because of this sensory connection between the three systems. The amygdala has also been linked to being important in certain emotional responses, such as fear and anxiety. A case study found that a woman named as SM, who due to, being, to brain damage did not have an amygdala, did not feel fear when presented with various situations that would result in the average person feeling fear. The amygdala has also been shown to be important in the ability to interpret emotions based off facial expressions in children. Shaw et al. 2004 found that those who suffered brain lesions in early, early in development found it more difficult to understand the emotions of those around them. Functional imaging studies in children and adolescents also support the notion that the amygdala is recruited early in development to establish, establish stimuli and response relationships related to dangers. Causes of brain lesions in the amygdala. There are numerous causes that can lead to brain lesions which affect the amygdala. These include seizures, anterior tempor temporal lobectomy, brain aneurysms, brain AVM or brain tumors, which can be both cancerous and non-cancerous, encephalitis or brain inflammation, epilepsy, hydrocephalus or a congenital brain abnormality, traumatic brain injury, abscesses, Alzheimer's disease, cerebral infarction or a stroke, multiple sclerosis or MS. The effects of lesions in the amygdala. Brain lesions can have a variety of effects depending on the severity of the damage and in the case of the amygdala, the age the damage occurred. Feinstein 2010 found that those in their adulthood who suffered damage to their amygdala had little to no observable changes in their executive function, memory, and general intellectual functioning. 
This research also supported Monk et al.'s findings that damage in early childhood did not leave lower executive function, memory, and general intellectual functioning. Oh, sorry, did lead to lower executive functioning, memory, and general intellectual functioning. Damage to the amygdala in adults has also resulted in personality changes. For example, when gambling, two women with bilateral amygdala damage showed a higher reduction in loss aversion compared to same age participants. This is despite knowing the risks and rewards fully. The researcher behind it, Di Martino, says it may be that the amygdala controls a very general biological me mechanism for inhibiting risky behavior when outcomes are potentially negative. Hyperactivity of the amygdala, or having one amygdala that is smaller than the other, has been linked with fear and anxiety disorders. Anxiety is a psychological response to something perceived as dangerous, whilst fear is an emotional response to that perceived danger. Anxiety can worsen when the amygdala sends signals that a person is in danger, even if in reality there isn't a significant threat. The amygdala has been linked to a number of dis disorders such as social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and borderline personality disorder. Brain lesions are much more likely to cause these disorders to occur, although they can be due to genetic predisposition. The amygdala is involved in many emotional processes. Lesions in right or bilateral amygdala can interfere with people's ability to empathize. Cripley's 2009 study agrees that the main role of the amygdala is in its contribution to the assessment of emotional awareness in people. Therefore, damage to the amygdala, especially in younger people, can impact their ability to judge others' emotions. Application of Neuroplasticity Neuroplasticity is defined as the ability for neuronal circuits to make adaptive changes on both a structural and functional level, ranging from molecular, synaptic and cellular changes to more global network changes. In the last decade, scientists have discovered just how amazing the brain truly is in its ability to heal and change itself in order to cope with damage. Dr. Carson, in 1985, restarted the surgical procedure hysterectomy. This is when the brain is cut in half. It can only be done on children and when there is no other option. One such example is Miranda, who was having dozens of seizures a day. After her hysterectomy, she was able to quickly recover due to her young age with minimal impairments. Dr. Carson says this is because their brain cells haven't decided what they want to be when they grow up. However, on the other hand, brains still in development are more vulnerable to damage, as they are still undergoing development in their brains during a critical time period, so damage could be worsened or more permanent. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is a popular treatment method for a variety of conditions that are related to the amygdala. It is defined as a type of psychotherapy in which negative patterns of thoughts about the self and the world are challenged in order to alter unwanted behavior patterns or treat mood disorders such as depression, anxiety, uncontrolled anger, and insomnia, insomnia to name a few. Neuroplasticity research is in its early stages and there are insufficient high quality studies demonstrating its ability to treat the impacts of amygdala brain lesions. Annie Hopper's Dynamic Neural Retraining System, TM, DNRS for short, and Ash Ox Gupta's Amygdala Retraining Program are two neuroplasticity treatments identified. These programs focus on techniques involving yogic techniques, mindfulness techniques, and meditative techniques. Their effectiveness, however, cannot be verified, as they are not supported by formal data nor controlled clinical studies. The only evidence for them is online and anecdotal evidence. Developments in neuroplasticity are still in their infancy, and as the neuroscience research grows, our understanding of the ability of the amygdala to respond and overcome brain lesions will increase. Thank you.